came out onto the field. Today's Yellow Jacket football game is brought to you by the Oreo Calf, a great place for sports, located at 294, two, two, 294 North Rocky River Drive in less than two minutes from campus. Yeah, the Oswald Companies and the Hoffman Group as well is uh, helping bring you today's Yellow Jacket football games, and they are here for all of your insurance and risk management needs. And they come back onto the field in their Wildcat set with Sam Goff at quarterback, and he runs up the middle, and he looks like he may have enough for the first down if the line judge marks it at the... The head linesman said at the 15, they needed to get to the 16, so... It looks like that two-yard gain will get the Yellow Jackets a first down and 10 just outside of, uh, well, just inside the red zone, actually, just outside of the goal-to-go uh, scenario. 15 yards between them and the touchdown, as well as the Muskies' defense. Yellow Jackets bring Hudson back onto the field, and it looks like he's going to be in an empty set. He's going to have a tight end to the left of the tackle. Hudson calls for the snap, takes it. Looks like it's going to be another draw, and he has stopped short. Looks like he's going to get right back to the line of scrimmage, and the young, and uh, Muskies did a great job of job stopping that draw play. Yeah, they absolutely did. Uh, there was nothing doing on that play for Hudson. He did a, as much as he could with what he had, but he didn't have much as the, the defensive uh, push off the snap of the ball really backed the line up for BW and didn't give Hudson any time to do anything with the football. And kind of spreading out once you get into the goal line is sometimes a disadvantage. Yeah, absolutely, because then everything becomes compressed and some of those 10, 12-yard routes have to become 8- and 7-yard routes, and it really puts more defenders in the box. And Hudson looks to go to the air. He gets some pressure, and he almost gets the ball out to the net, but he... They don't mark him down, so he does mark. They do mark it as an incomplete pass. He got pretty lucky there to not give up a sack. Yeah, he got pretty lucky on two uh, in two ways. It could have been a sack, and had the ball actually been a backwards pass, it, it might have been in an area where you could have called grounding because he was between the tackles. Uh, there was an eligible receiver there, but it was clearly to avoid the sack. So credit the young man for getting rid of the football and living the fight another day. Now it's third and ten for the Jackets. Jackets come out in their pistol formation. Stanek goes to the right in motion, causes a snap, and it's going to be a play action. Hudson goes to the air. He looks for a pass, and he is brought down and sacked on the play by the Fighting Muskies outside linebacker who did a great job of containment. Also their leading tackler on the day, which will be Mick Fisher. Fickle did a great job, too. Uh, wrap Hudson and make sure that he didn't get out of the grasp or try to throw it away again. Credit the young man. He, he missed an interception at, uh, on a previous play earlier in the drive, and he came up with a great uh, great defensive stop right there. Joseph Simonis comes out for the field goal. It's up, and it is good. And Joseph Simonis converts. Making it a 10-0 game with the Yellow Jackets on top of the Fighting Muskies. Pretty good kick there from the senior. 39 yards on the kick. Maybe 40 depending upon how they decide to spot it. But what a great attempt right there by Simonis to uh, split the uprights and put more points on the board for the Yellow Jackets. That's why John Snell has some confidence in the young man, the senior, over a 100-point scorer in his career. And you're seeing why right there, because he's got a good leg that he can send it down the field and also put it between the uprights. The Yellow Jackets have really helped out their defense today by keeping them off the field as much as possible, because the Fighting Muskies, if, if they put something together and get away from those penalties and those miscues on some of those plays, this could be a very entertaining game. Well, it could be a very different game, too. The B uh, BW might actually be playing from behind if Muskingum weren't had to have uh, you know kind of penalized themselves uh, in those first two drives with a, a bad screen in play that led to a lost yardage on the second drive and then the holding penalty that negated a big gainer over the middle in that first drive. We'll see what the jacket defense has in store on this third possession but a short kickoff is not going to be good. Wade gets the kick and he has another positive gain there as he gets past the 35-yard line. 
Yes, yeah, as a nice, no, another nice return for the for the Muskies. BW's given up those huge chunk returns on the play. Uh, um, taking a look back at that last drive, the 38-yard field goal by Joe Simonis capped off a 16-play, 72-yard drive that took seven minutes and 23 seconds off the clock and this game is moving fast because both teams are committing to the run so when you get a seven minute and 23 second possession you're talking about taking off half a quarter in you know basically what amounts to 10 to 12 minutes of real time that's huge if you're continuing to give up those chunk plays against Muskingum's offense having those type of drives gives you an opportunity to uh, take the ball out of their hands you have to really credit the Yellow Jackets play callers. The coaches are doing a good job of keeping the game within for the young guy, the sophomore, Jake Hudson. Yeah, they are doing a fantastic job to uh, – not to say that he can't run complex sets because I'm sure that he can, but they're doing a, a good job to put him in situations where he can be successful without having to do too many things. And the Muskies come back out with uh, another run to get them – a third and four and this is another big down because if the yellow jackets could get the ball back into their offense hands they can possibly um continue to run up run the score up a little bit before halftime right another score would be absolutely critical for the jackets they're only up by 10 right now so it's a two possession game if you can get another possession before halftime and put some more points on the board make it a three possession game really start to separate yourself from the muskies and they come out, and it looks like it'll be an incomplete pass. Dagener looking for his receiver, cutting across the field, but a great defensive play there by the Yellow Jackets. And they'll bring out their punting unit again. Mike Wagner will be the returner, and kicking and punting for the Muskies will be Cody Dent. Another uh, a first three and out for the Yellow Jackets defense is a pretty big stop for the defense today. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, anytime you can get off the field quickly and put the hands into a hot offense, good things are going to happen. They get the punt up. It looks like beautiful kick. Field it at the ten yard line, and instead of calling a fair catch, he takes a pretty good hit at the 11 yard line and that's where the yellow jackets will start their next drive yeah just a, a fundamental tackle right there by the coverage man for muskingum uh you just put a shoulder down ran through the the ball carrier and brought him down efficiently and effectively that's a good open field tackle not exactly the easiest thing to do in football but that young man definitely made a good play he did the yellow jackets come out uh three receivers set a pistol formation and now the first time we'll see austin smith he'll be behind jake hudson hudson calls for the snap looks like he's going to hand it off to austin smith austin smith runs it up the middle right behind his guard and tackle on the left side of the field but he only gets a three yard gain and the first time we see the junior austin smith today yeah the bw uh leading rusher uh, was down those first couple drives and now he's uh, running with the ones and we'll see if that respite to start the game gives him a little bit more motivation uh, to run with a full head of steam. Well, it looks like we have Tyler Wolf, Trevor George, and Brian, Brian Cook on the field as their receivers. And a, another read option play and Hudson keeps it. He looks for a block but it's stopped short. He'll be three yards shy of the first down. And that read option play has really helped Hudson out so far in, in this game. Yeah, it's been a, it's a good weapon for the offense. Uh, but on that play, it, it had limited success. Hudson uh, did the best he could with what he had, but the defense pretty much closed the hole uh, quickly on that play and didn't really give him much. They come out to a shotgun pistol set. He looks to the sideline to get the play. They come out in a four receiver set with one running back in a shotgun formation to the right of Hudson. It is third down, and they take the ball, and he hands it off to Smith, but he looks like he's going to be one yard shy of the first down, and they're preparing to bring that punting unit out, and they're going to punt the ball. So uh, another 
Three and out for the Muskies, as well as the last drive for the Muskies on offense. Yeah, they did a good job to answer their own three and out with one from the Yellow Jackets. That defense is tough for Muskingum. This is not an easy game for the Yellow Jackets. I know they have a 10-point lead, but they've had to work pretty darn hard for those 10 points, and they're going to have to work even harder if they want to try and build that lead. But right now, they're going to be focused on trying to hold the lead because Muskingum stands to reason that they're going to have very good field position on this punt. Darian Maynard, and it is not a good punt at all. It does get a roll, and it gets a nice bounce. Took a 13-yard roll right there off the foot of Tommy Fuller. It didn't go very far, but it took a nice roll. Uh, and fortunately for the Jackets, it did. Otherwise, Muskingum would have possession inside their own, uh, inside the BW 40-yard line. Indeed, so it will be first and ten from the forty-eight yard line. But you have to be in. But the Muskies come out in a great position because they are in the Yellow Jackets territory. So if they can get some things going, they can possibly get put some points on to the board this drive. Yeah, this is absolutely a must if you're Muskingum. You have to get points out of this drive. And he keeps it on the read option, and he gets enough. They will mark him shy of the first down, so it'll be a second and one, but a pretty good read option there from Dagener. Yeah, it was a good read option, and he did a good job to, to gain those nine yards on first down. So ball inside the 40-yard line for Muskingum, and again, the running game continues to, to plague the Jackets on defense. It looked like the read option did a good job of freezing the, off, the defense on that play for the Yellow Jacket. Dagener takes the snap. And he hands it off, and they look like they're going to have enough for the first down as he gets one yard on the play. Yeah, Scanlon needed one. He got two. Uh, he got the ball down to the 37-yard line. And we're inside of five and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Quick move in half. Uh, both teams like to run the football, and uh, that is ticking a lot of time off the clock. But there's plenty of time for Muskingum to get on the scoreboard or for the Yellow Jackets to get a stop and to potentially put points on the board themselves. The, to come out in a shotgun formation, he takes a snap. Is it another play action? And he gets it out to the receiver, Damon Jones, and he breaks a tackle to get a six-yard gain on the play. Yeah, that was a good bit of uh, movement right there by the wide receiver to duck uh, out of a, an initial tackle attempt. Uh, one of the Jackets went for a big hit and uh, it kind of came up empty because the Jones spun off the contact and got further up the field. So now it's the second and medium for this Muskie team, and we'll see what uh, Griffin Degener uh, can do with the football. And Degener has really shown who his favorite um, target has been yeah, so far. Yeah, there's no question about that. He's looking for number 12 as often as possible. He goes to the opposite side of the field, getting it to Hayes Carruth. Carruth. Yep. And Hayes Carruth comes up with the catch, but it looks like they give him a pretty good spot there to make it a second and one. Maybe enough for the first down. It's pretty close. Uh, it, the referee's going to give it to him. I don't know about that one, but... I don't know that John Snell is going to win this argument with the headlinesman. Anytime you start arguing with the official, unfortunately, um, he has the power on the field, so you, you kind of have to go by his word, but you can at least put a bug in the ear to watch the spot the next time. Yeah, and that's the second time they got a pretty good spot there, but first and 10, they're on the 27-yard line, and the Muskies are in scoring territory. Dagener takes the snap, but he hands it off. And his running back looks to get to the outside. One block, and he could be. He stopped there, and he hurdles the cornerback. And almost could have been a touchdown, but a good touchdown saving tackle there. There was a lot of movement on that play uh, with Scanlon after he took the snap. He looked like he was stopped after about five yards, spun off a tackle, gained an extra probably uh, eight to ten yards on the play after hurdling a defender. Uh, that actually came back to haunt him because uh, he left himself exposed and he got tripped up. Somebody undercut his legs and he ended up falling forward. But still a first down and now uh, it's in the red zone time for the Muskies. And a shotgun set going in motion and he fakes the handoff and he keeps it but it, a broken play and the Yellow Jackets come up with a stop and do, do not allow a yard on that play. Yeah, Degener really didn't have any room to, to maneuver on that play. And uh, he's lucky he didn't have any lost yardage on the play. 
because there was a ton of heat up front from those uh, big defensive tackles for the Yellow Jackets. And also, we look like we have a Yellow Jacket shaking up a little bit. Brian Stepp, the team's leading tackler, comes off the field. Going into the game for him will be Zach Ponder. The Muskies come out in their shotgun formation. Dagener looks to go to the air. He's getting a little pressure, but he does go to the air, and it's an interception. A good catch there, and a touchback for the Yellow Jackets. A great way to stop that drive there by Sam Goff. Yeah, Goff did a fantastic job to maintain position, and uh, it's too many times you see cornerbacks and linebackers in coverage, and they have their back to the line of scrimmage. They don't know where the ball is going. On that play, Goff did a great job to spin his head and to keep an eye on the football while keeping an eye on Scanlon, who was streaking up the right sideline. The play was really busted up by one of the Yellow Jacket defensive tackles. One of the big guys up front shot through the hole. Very well could have drawn a holding penalty on Muskingum's uh, left guard, but you know that allowed that pressure allowed Goff to maintain position on the sideline against Scanlon, and he secured the catch along the sideline for the interception. A little bit more air under that, and it could have been a potential touchdown. That's what I was thinking early on, but there was just not a chance for that to be caught by the offensive player. A low snap, but he does get it up, and coming back for the ball is Wolf, and he almost comes up with that catch, but they get a flag on the play. A little bit of an acting job by Tyler Wolf, and uh, I know we're right across the parking lot from the Clay Center of Art and Drama here at Baldwin Wallace, but uh, that acting job did, <laughs> did, uh, did BW a, a world of good. Uh, you know, if the cornerback turns around or the safety turns around, that's not a penalty. Uh, but because they didn't turn around and they ran into Wolf, that's what gave him the free 15 yards. So. Two back-to-back -back mistakes by a Muskingum, and that has the Yellow Jackets out to their own 35-yard line with 2.23 to play here in the first half. Big opportunity for BW to build on this advantage. And kind of similar to Dagener's play. If Houston puts a little bit more air on that. Could be a touchdown. They come on the shotgun set, four receivers on the field, and he looks to go to the air. He throws it to Steinwalk, and he has the first down. Yeah, good play right there. I, as I say all the time, Steinwalks is not going to make the sexy plays, but he's going to make the ones that count. When you look at the end of the game, you're going to see a guy with four catches for maybe 41 yards, but he's probably going to have three or four first downs on those receptions. That's a guy that's absolutely invaluable to the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets right now, especially with Hudson being a younger guy and trying to instill some confidence in himself and his teammates. And a fake pitch. Austin Smith keeps the ball, but he loses it. And the Yellow Jackets will lose a few yards on that play. You got to hold on to the ball there. Brett Zupancic, the man who jumped on the loose ball, credit him. And, and actually, it's a modest loss, maybe one and a half yards uh, lost on the play. and make it two, but credit Zupancic for having the presence of mind to jump on the football. He was really aware because there were a ton of muskies in the area, but none of them were able to recover it. And now the Yellow Jackets are in their shotgun set. Calls for the snap. He looks to go to the air again. Gets the ball out of his hand, and it is caught. And a good game there, a great move, and he gets past the first down on that catch. Looks like it's Glover as they connect on that play and get the ball rolling. It's one minute and nine seconds left. The Yellow Jackets are up 10-0, to zero and they're moving the ball. Yeah, nice little crossing out there. Uh, by Glover to and then to hold on to the football as well. You know, Dewan is a, a very uh, shifty player that can make use of his speed in space, and that's exactly what we saw on there. And they call Wolf in motion. Hudson takes the snap. He looks to go to the air again, and he's got a little pressure, and he comes up, and it is a sack, but they call it an incomplete pass. Uh, that's that's a Tom Brady tuck rule call right there with the ball uh, just going forward enough for it to be ruled an incomplete pass. Uh, Hudson had the presence of mind to try and dump it off uh, at the last second. Not sure if there was a receiver in the area, but no flag for grounding. So, And actually, he was probably considered outside of the tackle box um, by the time he had rolled out to his right. So... 
Good play by the sophomore quarterback to avoid the sack. Would have been a huge loss. Now it's still second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets from the Muskingum 42-yard line. Yeah, Muskie's head coach is not really happy about that last call, but the Yellow Jackets look to go to the air, but they're getting pressure, and there's an interception, and the Muskies steal the ball, and it's 30 seconds left, and they could possibly make something out of this. Yeah, Cheney Fulton read that play the whole way. He closed on the ball quickly. The receiver kind of planted in his area, and Hudson rolling backwards uh, took way too much time. That clued in Fulton to get to the wide receiver on the sideline and the veteran linebacker jumped the route and secured the interception had he been able to uh, maybe plant his left foot he could have run for a considerable gain up the sideline but momentum was taking him outside uh, of bounds so regardless of that play though Muskingum takes over first and 10 at the 47. They come on their shotgun set Degner looked to go to the air he's almost tackled but Looks like that might get a grounding call. The officials thinking about it. There was nobody goes. even close to the area in Muskie uh, in a Muskingum uniform. I think he's not going to pull it. No, the the refs are still talking about it. Conversations never go well for players when officials are involved. They just never do. And if, if I'm the fighting and Muskies, there, there comes the flag, and Muskingum's coach. Not very happy. Al Logan in his 10th year at Muskingum. He's letting the referee and the lines, uh, linesman uh, know his displeasure with that call. That's going to be a penalty in yardage, but also loss of down. So not a good scenario right there for the Muskies. They had great field position after the interception, and again, another mistake You know, causes them go, uh, to go in the opposite direction. And if you think about it, he has a pretty good argument there with the last non-call from the Yellow Jackets on the intentional grounding. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a very subjective call. There are rules in place for it. He has to be outside the, or inside the tackle box, not a receiver in the area. Maybe the ball doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage too. But, you know, those are all different scenarios that you have to factor in. And, you know, if it doesn't meet those criteria, the officials – will make a call or make a change the bad thing is those calls take forever to make it, it results in you know a lot of conversations having to go on and that n not necessarily should happen it's either a penalty or it's not you confer was there a guy in the area no okay great because he was still in the tackle box that should be a one sentence and done enough with this five minute conference by the officials and uh, Fighting Muskie takes a timeout, and the coach is still letting the... Uh, I think that's probably more so to, A, calm the players down and just get them to relax, have them meet with the offensive coordinator, and that's probably also an opportunity for, for Coach Logan to do some more chit-chatting with the officials. But you don't want to do too much because then you get another flag thrown, and then it's all sorts of bad. Yeah, you, you, you definitely don't want to get one right now. There's only 25 seconds left in the first half. And before that penalty, they had a pretty good field position yep. to be in position to possibly um, put some points on the board. Yeah, ball was on the 47-yard line after the interception. It was first and 10, just three uh, yards away from being in Baldwin-Wallace territory. And now you're backed up quite a bit, and those 25 seconds don't look quite as big when you have to go you know, 10 extra yards. So they come back out. They bring their offense back out onto the field. The Yellow Jackets defense comes back out, and they're going to spread it out. It's going to be a second and 19 for the Fighting Muskies. Nine-yard penalty. Dagener looks to go to the air. He has some pressure, and he's going to be brought down with a sack on the play. And coming up with that sack for the Yellow Jackets will be number, 40, number 46. Spencer, who comes up with yeah. that big sack there to push them back even more. They're probably going to let the clock run out here. No, Muskingum took a timeout. They want to see if they can try to get a positive play, but they are third and, well, generously, I'd say uh, third and about 27. Uh, they need to get the ball to the Yellow Jacket 43. It's currently on their own 30, so... Uh, that's a long, long road. And, you know, if you're BW, if they don't get a first down but they get tackled in bounds, you might want to call a timeout and then force them to punt and send a whole, uh, you know, send a full house block attempt 
at the ball. We saw Leverett get close on the first one. We saw him not really uh, run out the second one, but had an opportunity nonetheless to shoot off the edge and really get an opportunity to block that punt. So I would make him punt the ball if I can get a stop on third down here. Yes. And they come back out in a shotgun set. Four receivers on the field, one running back to the right of the quarterback, and Degener looks to go to the air. He has some time. He gets the ball out, and it is underthrown. And that is something that you don't want to happen. The clock to stop on a fourth down. Going to have to punt the ball away. And as you said, if I'm the Yellow Jackets, I want to send the entire house to him. Yeah, you do. You want to drop maybe one guy back to return it, but you want to have not, uh, ten other guys going after the football. The thing you want to avoid – don't make contact. Whatever you do, don't make contact. Don't give them an untimed down to end the half. Just bad things can happen from there. So send the block, but make sure you get to the ball. Go for the ball. Go for the foot. Don't go for the punter. And as you said, Leverett is on the edge for the Yellow Jackets, and he's running back, and he doesn't get there, so the ball gets off. The Wagner calls with a fair catch. And there'll be four seconds left in this first half, and the Yellow Jackets... First and 10 from their own 28. So I, in this area, I, I kind of think, uh, having been around the program for a few years and seeing what John Snell does, I wouldn't be surprised if they kneel on it, take a 10-point lead in the half, knowing that they're going to start the second half with the football. You don't want to do anything too crazy and risky because then if you do make a mistake, it could get returned for a touchdown and just then all the momentum goes right to Muskingum. So the Yellow Jackets come out. And their kneel down formation. And they'll take this into halftime with a 10 zip lead over the Fighting Muskies. So far in this game, has been a pretty, pretty good game for the Yellow Jackets. Their defense has held up late. Um, at the beginning of the game, it was a little shaky for the Yellow Jackets defense, but with a few miscues for the Muskies, kind of changed the game around for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, they're really doing a good job to take advantage of the opportunities Muskingum is, is giving them and Muskingum and making Muskingum pay for their mistakes and anytime you know you go backwards against a, a team that doesn't have a whole lot of confidence you're, you're giving them an opportunity to uh, get away with some things that they not necessarily should get away with so if you're Muskingum and you're coach Al Logan that's probably number one on your punch list to talk to your team about at halftime is stop the self-inflicted mistakes we're we're not good enough to overcome those kind of mistakes. We're a good football team, but if you give a team like BW that doesn't have a whole uh, a lot of good things going when it comes to defending the run, an opportunity to get off the field, then you're really kind of doing us a disservice. So we're going to step aside for the halftime break. The band is on the field, and we'll let you take in the sounds of the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jacket Marching Band here from Trestle Field. We'll be back in a few minutes to talk more about the first half, preview the second half, and bring you quarters three and four of action here from Finney Stadium.
Mark of 15 wins. Oh, okay.
Welcome back to George Finney Stadium here in Berea, Ohio. My name is Martel Prayer, being joined today by Matt Florzanski and ready to kick off the second half, which is about a little bit under five minutes until the second half begins. So far in the game, the Yellow Jackets are leading 10 to zero with a pretty good showing today from the sophomore quarterback, Jake Hudson. The Muskies have been a little shaky on defense, but their offense has been positive with a few negative setbacks with penalties and a few a fumble that cost them to ruin the drive as well. So far in this game, what have you seen from the Yellow Jackets to make them successful, Matt? Really, it's been the play of Jake Hudson early on in the game. He used that read option extremely well. He got some good running by Stanett, and then later on, Austin Smith came into the ball game to try and get things going. But really, it starts with their sophomore quarterback. He's playing with some confidence. He's moving the football, and although he's made some miscues, you know, you still have to look down at his stats and go, okay, he's gained 46 yards or netted 46 yards on seven carries. He's completed nine of his 14 throws for 100 yards and a one TD. He's avoided a, a lot of sacks. He's only been sacked once. He's been hit multiple times. Yes, he does have the interception, but all things considered, he's playing pretty well. I think one of the biggest things is four punts that Muske Muskegon has had so far in the game, and that's really key because it shows that the defense is getting off the field no matter how they're getting off the field. The defense for the Yellow Jackets is getting off the field and putting the ball into the quarterback hand as well as the offense hands as many times as possible. So that's one of the biggest things that I've noticed in the first half and also penalty yards as well as penalties. The Muskegon comes out with three penalties for 34 yards on three very key drives that they had and could have put themselves in scoring positions. The Yellow Jackets have zero penalties. Yeah, that's almost unheard of to have that clean of a half uh, with no infractions or anything. So BW's not, the, the difference in the scoreboard comes down to the fact that BW's not making those self-inflicted mistakes and Muskingum is. Otherwise, it's, it's a completely different ball game. But when you look at those things, I mean, that's the glaring thing that stands out is the fact that BW is not hurting themselves with penalties whereas Muskingum has done nothing but hurt themselves with penalties and negative plays. What did Ms. Muskingum have to do in the second half to turn their fortunes around a little bit to come out a little bit better in the second half and what do you see BW doing in the process of stopping them? Well for Muskingum it's avoiding those, uh, those crushing penalties and the turnovers. You can't uh, do that against an upper echelon team in the Ohio Athletic Conference, even one that's struggled uh, in league play so far this year. You still have to respect uh, Baldwin Wallace and the tradition that they have and the talent that they have. Uh, and I'm not saying Muskingum doesn't. I'm just saying that they have to find a way to handle their business in a better fashion because they're leaving too many opportunities on the field. When you start off a drive at your own 47, with a minute and some change left here in the first half uh, after an interception on a really not badly thrown ball but just a maybe telegraphed route a little bit um, from Hudson and you don't get points out of that drive, that's pretty crushing. You can't have that if you want to be successful. So they have to limit their mistakes and play a clean second half if they want to come back and win this ball game. The thing of it is, though, they're going to have to start on defense. So BW has an opportunity to build their lead before Muskingum even gets the football. Indeed. The Yellow Jackets will start with the ball this second half. We're a little bit under a minute left before the second half starts. So the Yellow Jackets will bring their sophomore out, Jake Hudson again, who's had a pretty good good day so far minus the sack and the interception um he's pretty much had a pretty great um showing so far it's a lot of positivity for the future for yellow jacket football with jake hudson yeah he's managed 146 yards of offense between nine completions and seven rushes he's averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry he's the leading rusher on the day for the jackets he's also the leading rusher in terms of longest run from scrimmage on the day for either team with a 29 yarder that he broke off earlier in the first half so we'll see what hudson can do in the second if muskingum has an answer for him defensively 
And if they do, this one's going to get interesting in a hurry from Trestle Field. So for the Yellow Jackets coming out with their kick return formation, they, their two returners will be Jordan Leverett and Trip Washington. Kicking off for Muskegon will be Cody Dent for the Muskegon. Jimmy Marshall. The Yellow Jackets kicker is Jimmy Marsh, but Cody Dent will be the kicker for Muskegon as there's 15 minutes on the play clock, play clock for the second half to begin, and Muskegon comes out and getting prepared to kick the ball off, and, he, and it's up. Looks like it's going to go out of bounds, and they'll keep the ball out of the hands of two dangerous returners, but the Yellow Jackets will start with great field position. Yeah, that goes back to the self-inflicted mistakes right there. I know you don't want to give the ball to Leverett or Washington on a return, but you also don't want to kick the ball out of bounds. Uh, that is going to be a good opportunity for the Yellow Jackets to start this second half. Ball should be spotted at their own 35-yard line on the right hash mark, so we'll see what Hudson can do. Shorter field uh, then Muskingum probably wanted to give him. But nonetheless, they're going to see what they can do defensively against this uh, this sophomore to see if they can rattle him and maybe force him into another mistake. And Dent did a very, very quick run there on that kick. That could have possibly – that really hurt them on that last kickoff. So the Yellow Jackets come out in their pistol formation. Going in motion will be Smith. He'll be in the, to the right of the quarterback, and it is a handoff to Smith, and he breaks through the hole, and he gets enough of the first down, breaks a few tackles, and he gets a 15-yard game to start this second half off. That's a good bit of running right there by Austin Smith. Maybe didn't like the idea of having to come off the bench to start the game, but he came out and uh, shot through the hole right there, and again, that interior blocking between the tackles is where the Yellow Jackets have made the most hay offensively today. Yellow Jackets come out in the shotgun formation. Two receivers to both sides of the field. George goes in motion. Now in the pistol formation. Calls for the snap. And it'll be a, a read option pitch. And it's off to George. And he breaks one tackle. And it's pushed out at the 46-yard line, the 44-yard line. And the Yellow Jackets are now second and four and moving the ball. A good, efficient play right there. Everybody uh, in the stadium thought Austin Smith took the ball up the middle, and instead it was Hudson on the keeper and then the pitch out to George. So credit uh, Hudson again with the good job of being deceptive back there with the football. Yellow Jackets in their pistol formation. Three receivers, one tight end to the left of the tackle. And they go to the – and it's a fumble snap, and Austin Smith fumbles the snap. As they do the quarterback running back trickery as well, again, with the running back going to quarterback for that play. Yeah, it didn't work out quite uh, like the Yellow Jackets had planned. They lost several yards on the play. Uh, not a good handle by Smith on the shotgun snap. Not sure if it was lower or higher than what he expected, but it caromed off his hands. Fortunately for BW, he did fall back on it uh, to save the possession, but still, you don't want to be going backwards when you have all the momentum going forward. And one of the Guys onto the field now. Chad Steinwalk will be in the slot formation for the Yellow Jackets. The Yellow Jackets are in the shotgun, and Hudson goes to the air. He's looking for a comeback route, and he gets it off to Wolf, and he is pushed out of bounds at the 33-yard line, and the Yellow Jackets are still moving the ball. A yeah, good bit of uh, designed play right there by the coaching staff. Steinwalks has been a, a key contributor in third down passing situations. And instead of having him as the target, they lined him up almost as a decoy on the left side of the field. And then uh, they've had Wolf with one-on-one -on -one coverage out to the top. And Wolf's a pretty tough cover in that situation. Shotgun formation, four receivers onto the field. Glover is now in your slot position. And a motion to a shotgun with Smith on to the left of Hudson. Hudson looks to go to the air. And he has a little pressure, but he still goes to the air. And Steinweck is open, and it is... It hits off the hands of Glover as it goes to the back of the end zone. Pretty good throw there. Yeah, Glover took a, a pretty good pop on the play. Uh, he kind of got rolled up on uh, at the end of the play uh, when he tried to go get the ball. That was a tight window to try to thread the ball into because there were two receivers and also two defenders in the area. Not much space for Hudson to get that pass completed but if you're the Yellow Jackets no harm no foul you take a shot deep 
worst case scenario you know it goes out of the back of the end zone you live to fight another day on second and ten and that's exactly what happened hopefully for their sake though glover is okay because he kind of rolled over after that play onto his uh onto his uh or from his back onto his stomach and now they're rolling him back onto his back and he it looked to be in a pretty considerable discomfort so hopefully the young man will be okay I want to remind you while we have this break in the action that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by the Ohio Education Credit Union. Gain the advantage. The Ohio Education Credit Union offers convenience, trust, and value. Build your future today. Medical Mutual of Ohio. Medical Mutual is a health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. The Cleveland Clinic Sports Health Division. The health care provider for BW Athletics. Parkway Auto Care in Berea, Strongsville Express Tire and Auto Service, and in Montville, we serve the southwestern suburbs of Greater Cleveland. American International, when you require a company with proven performance, rely on American International. The Comfort Inn in Middleburg Heights, where your comfort is just a part of the service we provide our guests, as well as the Courtyard by Marriott and Town Place Suites in Middleburg Heights. Have you stayed at a Marriott today? Yellow Jackets come out in a three receiver set, two running backs in the backfield, George, and George goes in motion, and he gets the catch, and he's off, and he gets a block, and he gets enough for seven yards on the play, and they have a little bit of a late hit there. Looks like someone took a shot. Looks like it's going to go against the Yellow Jackets. And it looks like it's against uh, Tyler Wolf actually, because the umpire just pointed at him. Uh, as the guilty party and did so rather emphatically so uh, that's going to be a, a pretty big penalty we talked about BW playing a, a clean set first half and that's their first penalty of the game for an illegal block in the back so that'll back them up from the spot it should back them up about 10 yards so the Yellow Jackets after that gain it comes back and it'll now be second and 10 so the Yellow Jackets do lose uh, quite a bit of yards on that pitch and catch there from Hudson to George and they look to the sideline to get the play and that's something that's, that could hurt you especially in a very very close game getting very deep into this um, second half yeah without question you can't uh, you can't allow those mistakes to happen they just can't Yellow Jacks take the snap there's going to be a read option and Hudson keeps the ball he spins and he almost has enough for the first down. Looks like he's going to be one yard shy. And that spin really helped him get those extra few yards there. Yeah, it did. And credit Austin Smith for really selling the fade because he took a pop by a defender on the play. And he hands it off to Austin Smith. And he has enough for the first down. The Yellow Jackets are on the 21-yard line. And they'll be first and 10 from there. Just outside the red zone for the Jackets. And uh, you, you want to put up seven if you're BW. You want to let that doubt start to creep into this Muskingum uh, University uh, football team that they can't come back in this game. Being only a 10-point lead, you know, early in the second half, this is an opportunity that they could really come back on the Yellow Jackets if BW's not careful. Yellow Jackets are on a shotgun set. You look to the sideline to get the play. Hudson takes the snap. He rolls out to his right. He looks to go to the air. He has a receiver, and it is overthrown and tender receiver on that play, Brian Cook. And the first, first time he was targeted this game. That's a good uh, move by Hudson. I know it's an incomplete pass, and people might look at that and say it's a bad play, but it's much better than the alternative of underthrowing it, trying to get it to Cook, and then turning it over. Incompletions out of the back of the end zone, not necessarily a bad play for a young quarterback. Indeed. So the Yellow Jackets come out in a four receiver set, three to the far side of the field, one to the near, and an empty backfield for Hudson. Hudson calls for the snap, and it will be a draw play, and they were there to stop that. Number 36 on the tackle for the Fighting Muskies. Yeah, Cheney Fulton did a good job to shoot through the gap and wrap and drop Hudson. We've called that name a few times tonight. Fulton with the interception with a couple plays near or at the line of scrimmage. 
Uh, this young man, he, he looks a part of a middle linebacker. He's got the old uh, neck, uh, old style neck roll uh, behind his helmet. He's got the big bulky shoulder pads. He's a, he's a thick kid that really uh, makes an impact on the field. This young man can flat out play football. He did a great job of running through the tackle as well, bringing his hips. The Yellow Jackets call another direct, but it is stopped in the back again by Fulton. And that is a great tackle on the play. Johnny on the spot again. Somebody might want to throw a block when they see 36 coming through the line. That is a tough kid, and he's really making Hudson's life miserable right now, especially with two of those big hits on the end of that drive. And now BW's going to settle for a field goal. It'll be just inside of a 40-yarder for Joe Simonis. Jake Carney will be the holder. He calls for the snap. It's down. It is up. And it has enough, and it is good. And Joseph Simonis comes up with a 40-yarder to knock three more points onto the field for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, that now makes it 13 to nothing in favor of Baldwin Wallace, the senior kicker out of Highland High School. Now with a 38 and a 40-yard field goal on the day, 9.32 left to play here in the third quarter from Trestle Field. Good job of kicking right there uh, by Simonis. The special teams is definitely coming through big for the Yellow Jackets, but they're giving up in returns. They're making up for with those good blocks on the long field goal attempt from Simonis. And if you're getting points out of a drive, it's always a positive drive there. The Muskies have to really get something done um, on this next drive to kind of get some type of points on the um, board. Yeah, there's no question. They need points, and they need them now um, if they want to get into this game. They got off the hook a little bit uh, by not giving up a touchdown. So that's step one. Now step two is to make sure that you can put some points onto the board. This is an offense that when you look at what they've done uh, throughout the season, they've been pretty good at moving the football but they haven't scored too many points. They lost to Capital in the opener um, by 18. They scored just 16 points. They scored 17 points in a win at Waynesburg, and then 28 in a win over Marietta, but then in losses to Heidelberg and Otterbein, they totaled a combined 41 points. So they're right around the 20-ish point mark uh, per game for the season, but uh, today they're sitting on zero through two-plus quarters of play and if they want to turn this thing around, they're going to have to get to the Yellow Jacket defense. And we have an offsize on the play by the Yellow Jackets. Look like they're going to make them re-kick it. Now I would. You've had good success kicking or uh, in kick returns. If you're musking them, why not back BW up five more yards and try to get a better run back? That's a good bit of playing if you can do it. Taking a look at that last drive, the Yellow Jackets marched 12 plays or marched 43 yards in 12 plays, took 528 off the third quarter clock, taking into account their last two scoring drives, which were capped off by 38 and 39 yard field goals from Joe Simonis. Those two drives alone have accounted for 28 plays, over 115 yards of offense, and they have taken nearly 13 minutes off the game clock. That's flat out getting it done in terms of managing the clock. The, the Yellow Jackets have done a great job of keeping the ball out of the Muskegon, uh, out of Muskegon's hand and also making sure that the defense stays on the sideline. Returning this kick will be Clevon Birch, Birch, and he gets to the outside. He looks to get around, but he is stopped short there of the 25-yard line, and he, they do give him a spot, so it'll be at the 26-yard line on this next drive. Yeah, that was a short tackle by one of the – the gunners on the special teams unit. I couldn't see a number on the play, but it was a good Boyd. it was a good solid tackle and he really brought down the ball carrier with some emphasis there. And now the ball is set at the twenty five yard line, first and ten for Muskingham. And that's very big for that tackle as I believe Boyd was the reason for the re kick, but the Fighting Muskies get up to the line and they get a quick playoff to get a five yard gain there as they continue to stay with the ground game. Yeah, Scanlon's doing the job in between the tackles, much like Smith and Stanette were for the Yellow Jackets. And that's going to make this game go quickly. So possessions are at a premium if you're musking them. You have to start turning them into points. And for the Jackets, you have to keep putting up a shutout. And the ball is thrown to Scanlon as he is brought down two yards shy of the first down. And you got to think the 
fighting muskies have to think about going to the air a little bit to try to get some explosive plays going. Yeah, they might, but the way that the running game has worked uh, and it only being a two-score game, they might look at it and say, if we just stick to what we know and stick to what has been working for us, we're going to be in good shape. And they might be right. So it's third and two. And the Muskies are on the on their own 28-yard line. They come out in a shotgun set, three receivers to the far side of the field, call in motion, bring the fullback in the backfield, and they're going to hand it off to Scanlon, and he looks like he has enough for the first down. Yeah, he'll have a yard more than he needed, so it's, it'll be first and 10. It looks from the 36-yard line. Muskingham again getting those big gains with the run, those five- and six-yard gains. They start to add up after a while. Scanlon has done a great job of following the blocks that he has received from his offensive line. His offensive line has done a very, very great job of run blocking. They've got a lot, the Yellow Jackets have gotten a lot of pressure on the quarterback when he's dropped back to pass, but the run blocking is very great for Muskingum. Yeah, absolutely it is, and that's probably why uh, Muskingum is stuck so much with the run. You know, just 11 pass attempts on the day, that's number 12 right there. The scandal looks like the ball comes out, and the Yellow Jackets don't come up with the ball, but it is. Well, they, they did, but it was ruled down. Um, he was marked down at the 40-yard line after a gain of three. BW definitely recovered it, but the linesman signaled that Scanlon had a knee on the turf, and that's another potential turnover that the uh, uh, Yellow Jackets could not force. Coming out in uh, another shotgun set. They give it up to Scanlon, and Scanlon bulls those bulldozers forward to get a four-yard gain to make it a third and three on this next play. Yeah, it's I mean it's definitely manageable for him to get this. And he's been their workhorse back all day long. We'll see what he can do on this play. Third and three from the from their own 44-yard line. The fighting musk comes out in a shotgun set, and he's going to go to the air. Diggender, he goes to the air, but it is incomplete, and it will be a fourth down play, and it's a, another fourth down that the fighting muskies didn't want to look forward to. Yeah, it, it hit the tight end, Granger Long, in his hands, uh, and he was right at the sticks. If he would have hauled it in, he might have gotten the first down, but unfortunately it was a little bit behind him, and thus he had the reach to make the catch and was then able to haul it in. So BW's defense will get off the field uh, another time, and that's a good bit of defense right there by the Yellow Jackets. Now they drop back in the punt return formation. Wagoner will run it back for the Jackets. He's standing at his own 20. Putting the ball will be Samuel Green for the Muskie, but they call a fake. It looks like he has enough for the first down. He has a little more with one guy to save the tackle, and he hires him out of bounds. Linebacker Cheney Fulton takes the direct snap, runs around left end, hurdles a defender at the end of the play, and it is a huge gain, and now Muskingum is in uh, the red zone as they have the ball right at the 20 yard line. What a play call by the Muskingum coaching staff to take advantage of something they saw in the Yellow Jacket uh, special teams lineup. A great call for a fake punt there. And they go to the air, Dinginger looking to go to the air. He holds the ball loosely and he's sacked. Looks like he's sacked on a play by Richardson and Allen as they come up with that sack to push the Muskie, Muskies back. 10-yard loss on the sack. That's not how you want to follow up a fake punt after uh, that led to a big gain. And unfortunately for Muskingum, that's exactly what they did. But credit the Jacket defense. They pursued the quarterback, and they didn't let him escape. For the first time today, they finally got him down on the turf. And actually the second time, rather, they finally got to him, and it prevented him from throwing the ball away. Muskies come out second and 20 after that sack there for the Yellow Jackets, and there'll be a play action, and they're going to the air. Looks like it'll be an incomplete pass, and a no flag on the play as well as the... A lot of hand fighting going on on both sides. The defender for the Yellow Jackets was uh, Brock Hole, and then uh, the receiver was Damon Jones. And a lot of uh, 
jockeying for position as the two were running down the field and uh, the referee kept the flag in the pocket. That'll bring up a third and 20 for Muskingum on the, after the incompletion. So a third and 20 from, their, from the Yellow Jackets 30 yard line. The fighting Muskie looks to the sideline for the play and if caught, that could have that was, that a, was touchdown. a touchdown. Yeah, no question about it. That would have been seven or six points on the board for the Muskies. And Muskies almost let the play clock run out. They have to call a timeout on that play. They've had a positive um, play coming out of this, coming out into the second half with that fake punt. So. What are some of the things you think they're going to be able to do and to try to get into this end zone with a third and three? It's not really you don't really practice too many plays for this. No, third and twenty uh, from your own thirty, not exactly something you want to see. Actually, it's from BW's twenty. But if you're Muskingum, uh, you know the running game has been what you've been great at. I don't know if you want to try it on a third and twenty. Look for Degener to go to his number one target. Look to find Damon Jones. And he's been one of the, the guys that had given the Jackets fits early in the day. And you also look like uh, for a possibility that Darius Hayes Carruth could be another uh, potential target for this long pass or maybe a short pass that they set up really, really well with good blocks and try to spring them that way. So do you, could you potentially look for a short pass here and make this four down territory? Oh, I absolutely think it's four down territory because if it's not and you kick a field goal, that means that it's a three-score game. And you don't want to turn a two-score game into a three-score game by having to kick a field goal. So, so it's third and 20 from the 30-yard line. The Muskies come out. They look to pass. They bring the house from the Yellow Jack, and he goes up in the air. And a great move by Jones, as you said. He went to his favorite target, making it a fourth and three yep. on this play. Very, very manageable fourth down conversion for the Muskies. Uh, it was a good route by Jones. Uh, Degener did a good job to hit him in stride. And uh, also, uh, Jones did a, a better job to spin away from a defender and uh, get 16 yards on the play. He probably would have been looking at a fourth and seven, fourth and eight, had he not made that spin to get, get another four yards on the play. So four from four from the far, from their, from the Yellow Jackets 14 yard line, and they bring everybody in. Shotgun formation, Dinginger goes up for a pass, and it is caught. It looks like he'll be marked down first right down. at the first down, and they do give it to him. It's a first down. A good bit of, of working inside of traffic right there for the Muskies. Uh, not a whole lot of space to do much, but it was enough to get that first down, and that's what they wanted. Now it's first down and goal to go. And Muskies are first and 10 from the 10-yard line. They come out in their pistol formation. The tight end goes in motion. Dinginger takes the snap and he hands it off to Scanlon. And he stops short of the five yard line. It'll be on the six. So it'll be second and six to go. And scoring territory for the Muskies. We'll see what kind of defense the Yellow Jackets are able to throw at the Fighting Muskies. We'll see if they can keep them out of the end zone. It's a critical stop if they can get it, but if they give up points, they're going to have to get right back on the horse and get down the field offensively. So second and seven to go. Tight end goes in motion. Look for a handoff, and he gets up, runs through. Looks like he'll be stopped on the one-yard line. And the Muskies' offensive line is coming up big for the running game today. Yeah, they have, and I would expect it to continue. They're not going to test the air, I don't think, on third and goal from the one. I expect them to either give the ball to Scanlon or have their big quarterback, uh, Griffin Degener, try and run it in. And they come out in a pistol set with full house backfield, two flankers and one deep back. And they hand it off, and it looks like he will be stopped short, making it a fourth and one. You have to think the Muskies are probably going to go for it again on this play. Yeah, if you go for it on, uh, if you go for the fake punt and then you go for it on fourth and four, you're definitely going to go for it on fourth and goal from inside the one. But you might have, you might be having to do it without one of your workhorses. There's a guy down on the field, can't see a number quite yet. 
But while we have this break in the action, we want to remind you that today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by Integrity Berea. When you are looking for a place to call home, choose Integrity Berea. Visit us today at mybereaapartment.com. Valley Ford Truck, when you need a big job done, call Valley Ford Truck. We carry the load for BW. Crown Plaza Suites in Middleburg Heights, we, when you are looking for a quality place to stay before any Yellow Jacket contest, please choose Crown Plaza Suites in Middleburg Heights. Resetting the action for you here with 2.56 to go in quarter number three from Trestle Field. The Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets lead the Muskingum Fighting Muskies 13 to nothing, but Muskingum has a fourth and goal from inside the one yard line. Scanlon looks to be the Muskie that was shaken up on the play. He's having trouble getting to his feet, and he's going to need some assistance getting to the sideline. Good to see him up and moving, but. That looks like it's going to be a, an injury that could spoil his day and thus alter Muskingum's plans offensively. You know, inside the one, you got to be thinking quarterback sneak here at this point with your number one back going out to the sideline. Yeah, Scanlon has been a very, very big help and very big to the running game for the Fighting Muskies today. But this is a very important play because it could potentially put points on the board, but also the Yellow Jackets could come up with a big stop to stop this drive. Yeah, they absolutely can. And uh, then you don't want to make a mistake. If you do stop Muskingum, you don't want to turn it over deep in your territory. Tight end goes in motion, and they'll do a quarterback option, and he gets into the end zone, and the Fighting Muskies get on the, to the board for their first touchdown of the game. Score 6-13, to 13, pending the PAT after. Yeah, not much the Yellow Jackets could do there. Um, they bit on the inside play fake on the read option keeper. Um, they chose to swarm the running back, and that left uh, Degener open for the around left end touchdown. So Cody Dent comes out for the PAT. The snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. And now the score is 7 to 13. And on that last drive, they used a lot of four. They used a lot of chances on fourth down to go for it, and it turned out good for them at the end yeah, of the game. Yeah, technically they did uh, three plays on fourth down. They did a fake punt. That was the big gainer by the linebacker, Cheney Fulton, who's been all over the field all day long. That got him a first and ten inside the red zone at the 20-yard line. Then they faced a fourth and four after a, um, a backup uh, early in the drive. They got a 16-yard pass play on third down, and then on fourth, they got a four-yard pass play for the conversion, and then fourth and goal from inside the one. They trust their senior quarterback to go get them a score, and that's exactly what he did. And now, we got a whole new ball game at 13-7. We'll see if the Yellow Jackets have an answer for the Muskies' touchdown. So, come, so the first time we've seen the Cody Dent kick the ball off, it went out of bounds, trying to do a pooch kick. Again, you think they're going to try to keep it out of the hands of both of the BW's dangerous returners, or they can go deep on this one. Cody Dent. You got to keep it in bounds, though. Get That's number one up. rule. And he kicks it off, and it does stay in bounds, and it looks like it's going to go to Jordan Leverett as it bounces forward. That's a lot the of ball. Muskies almost come up with the ball, and a bad bounce there almost hurt the Yellow Jackets. Not exactly sure. What anybody was thinking for BW that was dropped back for that kickoff return because that's a live ball once it goes past 10 yards and everybody on the Muskingum sideline knew it and they were hustling down the field. Credit, I believe, Leverett for jumping on the football at the 20, but that was almost disastrous for the Yellow Jackets and the special teams uh, unit is going to get a talking to, at least from their coordinator and probably John Snell as well. Yeah, that could have been a big turnaround and also continue to shift that momentum back to the Fighting Muskies. But Jake Hudson comes back out onto the field in a pistol formation. He looks to do a play action. He goes to the air. He has a receiver open. He gets it to Mike Wagner, and they get a first down on the play. No. Oh. The rule is waved off. Looks like the umpire came in and said, no, that ball bounced on the turf. 
the far uh, official on the sideline ruled that it was a first down, and that's where everybody in, on BW's sideline was looking toward. But the umpire said, no, 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 no. He changed it up and said that ball hit the turf. So it's second and ten now for the Jackets. That's a huge turn. It's an 11-yard loss by the change in call. Yellow Jackets shotgun formation. Hudson calls with the snap. And he's going to hand it off to Stanette was the ball carrier. He spun forward for about four yards, maybe five, depending upon the spot. Well, now it's third and medium for the Jackets, and the last thing they want to do is go three and out after Muskingum's touchdown. See, they're going to bring out a Steinwalk to bring out four receivers. One running back will be Stanette with Jake Hudson as the quarterback in there. Prepare for a third and six in a shotgun formation. Two receivers to both sides of the field. And Glover is back into the game as well for the Yellow Jackets. The Yellow Jackets take the snap. He's looking to go to the air. Hudson goes to the air. And it is incomplete. And the Muskies come up with a big stop there. Uh, also a three and out till they get the ball back. With looks like it could be pretty good field position. Yeah, it should be. If they get a decent return or don't turn it over, they'll have it. Pretty good. They should have it at least beyond between the 35 and the 50 on their side of the ball. But that means that Fuller or Austin to, uh, Smith, depend, and it looks like it's Austin Smith dropping back for this punt. Uh, we'll see what he's able to do, if he's able to get away a good one or if he takes some heat from Muskingum. Austin Smith takes the snap. He kick is up in a much better kick. And it's a fair catch call, and the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, and that's where the Fighting Muskies will come back out. Big stop there from that deep from the Fighting Muskies defense. Absolutely, no question about it. That was a huge stop for the Fighting Muskies. And if you're the Yellow Jackets, that's exactly what you're going to try to do. You're going to try to match that three and out with a three and out of your own, because that I mean is. As well as the first or second half started with you getting a long drive and then fall by a field goal, that last drive was pretty much disastrous from the start. They give up three fourth downs, including a fake punt that resulted in an almost 40-yard gain. Then they give up a, a really bad positioning on the kickoff because they didn't re they didn't field it. They recovered it um, after it was almost recovered by the Muskies deep downfield, and then. They go three and out, so the defense definitely has to pick up the special teams unit and the offense. And the Yellow Jackets send a great defensive blitz there by Nesherwich to not allow the Muskies to get anything on that last run, which will make it second and 10. The score is 13 to seven. There's a minute 30 left in this third quarter. The Muskies come out in their shotgun set. Dinginger goes to the air and his wide open catch and brought down by Brock Hall on that catch for Yeah, the Granger Long, the tight end who had dropped a pass earlier in the first half. You know, Degener did, showed some confidence in him and went right back to him and that resulted in a first down. Pretty violent tackle towards the end of that play. Hall's lucky he didn't get called for a horse collar. Come on, the pistol formation. Long goes in motion. It is a handoff to Wilson, and he gets through the hole, but only gets three yards on the play. And you get whistles as the second and eight. It looks like they're going to mark it at the 48-yard line for the Muskies. Yeah, and this could be the last play of the third quarter coming up here as we tick under 40 seconds left to play in the third from Trestle Field. Muskingum taking their time getting the play into the huddle. They've got 19 seconds uh, once they break the break the huddle. So we'll see what the call is here and how they try to get downfield. Muskies come out in the shotgun formation called Darius Carruth in motion, but he is stopped in the backfield as Sam Goff comes up to put the quarterback down before he gains anything. So it'll be third and eight with seven seconds left in this third quarter. Yeah, that was a good bit of defense by Groff to shoot through the hole. But uh, credit Degener, too, uh, for getting back to the line of scrimmage because he didn't have much space. Like, there, there was not a whole lot of room to do anything. But he found a way to get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a third and eight. It's still manageable. You're on the BW side of the 50-yard line, so there's definitely an opportunity for you to make a play here. 
you just have to figure out what you want to do, uh, whether you're going to trust Degener to try and throw the ball again or whether you're going to go back to the running game. Keep in mind, you don't have Scanlon out there. Uh, he was helped off the field due to injury, and he's currently sitting on a training table with one of his cleats off, so his afternoon might be done. Uh, that being said, then, then you're looking at Wilson being the next guy in the rotation, and this is an opportunity for that young man to make a name for himself. So the coming back out into the fourth quarter, 13 to seven, the Yellow Jackets bring their defense out, and the Fighting Muskies come out in a shotgun set with a full with two receivers, one tight end, one fullback to the left of Ginginger, and he goes up to the air, and it looked like it's going to be incomplete, uh, almost been intercepted. Yeah, should have been intercepted. It hit uh, Trip Washington in the hands, and really Jones got a little bit of a hand on it to try and bat it away, but that was all sorts of bad for Degener and Muskingham, and BW's fortunate that they could potentially get off the field here. I don't think that they would call a fake punt two two times in a row, and BW is lined up in a more you know, conservative block, more of a defensive formation here on this next punt. Trip Washington will be back waiting for, for the punt from Samuel Green. Green takes the snap, and he's the kick is up, and it's up, and it looks like it's going to go out at the into the end zone. Pretty good kick, but the Yellow Jackets will start at their own at their own 20 yard line. Yeah, it was a, a phenomenal kick and it had a great roll. The problem was it was too close to the end zone when it bounced at the five and had too much energy left in it to, and it kicked over the goal line. So it goes into the end zone for a touchback. BW starts the next drive first and ten. And in this, yeah, after going three and out on your last possession in a similar uh, spot on the field, you can't afford to go three and out again. So on this next drive, the Yellow Jackets come out and three receivers set, one tight end, and a running back in the pistol formation with Hudson at the quarterback. He calls for the snap. He play action. He looks to go to the air. And he has a little pressure, but he gets the ball off to Stanette. And Stanette is pushed out of bounds. That could be an extra 15. It should be because Stanette was on the white when he was hit. And that was very nearly uh, an, a hit after the runner was out of bounds. That would have been a bad mistake if they would have been flagged for it. But credit Hudson for staying in the pocket as long as he could and then keeping his vision downfield while escaping the heat. And he was able to deliver that ball where Stinnett could not only catch it, but also make a play after catching the football. Four receivers set, pistol formation. Stinnett motions to the left of Hudson. Hudson calls for the snap. And it'll be a handoff to Stinnett. And he gets a few blocks to get a five-yard gain on that last run. And yeah, not much doing there for the Jackets, but credit the uh, Stinnett with the carry. Uh, and, and a positive gain. Like I said, running between the tackles is a little bit more difficult than trying to bounce it outside. But on, uh, for the Yellow Jackets, that's where most of their success has come from today is between the tackles. They haven't had a whole lot of plays extend beyond the tackles. Second and five with the Yellow Jackets in a shotgun formation. Glover goes in motion into a pistol formation for the Yellow Jackets. Three receiver set. Hudson takes the snap, and it is a play action. And... Jake Hudson keeps the ball and gets enough of the first down and five extra yards. Yeah, gets the ball out to midfield. That's a good bit of running there by Hudson. He took a pretty good pop on the play, but he ran over a linebacker too. So good job right there to not only move the chains, but get some yardage after the contact as well. The Yellow Jackets have always kept for the last few years a uh, pretty good dual threat running quarterback. Um, in their offense these last few years. Yeah, they've had a number of good ones going back to my days at, uh, at BW, uh, back when Dan Larlam and, and Mark Anders were the quarterback running back battery for the Yellow Jackets. They've always had the guys that could run the option well. It's one of John Snell's favorite plays. And on the quarterback draw there to empty out the receivers and go with the draw that doesn't get one yard, so it'll be a second and 10. Um, after a few times of running the draw play, 
the Muskies pretty much stopped that one as they did the last two times. Yeah, but that could set something else up as well. Um, when you look at it, if they're starting to bite on the middle, then maybe that's when you start having your success running to the outside. And we'll see if the Yellow Jackets are able to do that on this next play. So the net comes back out as the running back to the left of Hudson. Hudson calls for the snap. And he rolls out to his left. He looks, it goes to the air, and he gets a receiver. Looks like he's going to be one yard shy of the first down. And they'll get that credit for the catch will be Trevor George. No, they're going to give him the first down. I thought he was a yard short myself, but he got a nice favorable spot by the linesman. And that moves the chains once again for the Yellow Jackets. So the Yellow Jackets will be first and 10 from the 40-yard line. There's 11 minutes and 50 seconds left in this game. The score is 13 to 7 with the Yellow Jackets on top. And they are now in the Muskie territory. Yellow Jackets are in a shotgun set, three receivers on the field, one tight end to the left of the tackle, and a pistol formation with Stanette and Hudson. It'll be a handoff to Stanette, but he is met in the backfield by the linebacker for the Muskie. Yeah, good interior pressure right there by Muskingham. Some frustration bowling over on both sides as the Yellow Jackets felt there was a late hit on Stanette. And uh, they let one of the linebackers from Muskingum know it, both verbally and physically. The officials kind of letting that thing play out uh, by itself. And they'll uh, see how the next, they'll watch it clo more closely on this next play and uh, the plays for the rest of the game to make sure the physicality doesn't get out of hand. Hudson takes the snap and he goes to the air to Trevor George. Trevor George gets two blocks, but is brought down. And that's a great way to fight through that block for the Muskies as Mick Fickle comes up with that tackle. Yeah, he did. He did a good job to avoid the horse collar, too. He grabbed him by the shoulder pad and just brought him down uh, fairly quickly. So now it's a third and long for the Jackets at the Muskingum 38-yard line. We're approaching the 10-and-a-half-minute mark here in quarter number four. This game sure is flying by with two offenses that love to run the football. Yellow Jackets come out in a four-receiver set, three to the far side, one to the near. Stanette goes in motion. Hudson takes the snap. He looks to go to the air. If he gets a few blocks, he gets the ball off, and it is tipped up in the air and almost intercepted, and the Fighting Muskies, two defenders fought for the same ball. Yeah, 23, Dorian Maynard batted it away from his own teammate, Bernard Johnson. Johnson had that interception all but wrapped up and now and now the linebacker for Muskingum, uh, one who has an interception on the day, Chaney Fulton is, uh, is arguing with the safety and cornerback saying hey um, guys we're on the same team you don't have to bat it away from each other, that was a turnover so coming out punting for the Yellow Jackets will be Austin Smith going back for the return will be Maynard, Dorian Menard and Smith is waiting for the snap as he gets it, the kick is up, and it looks like it's going to be out of bounds. Looks like they're going to get a spot at the... Looks like it's going to be near the 30-yard line. Wow. That's where the line's been standing. Now they're going to say the 25. 25. That, was a, that was not a good punt. It came off the side of his foot, and really Muskingum wasn't even expecting the punt. They kept their defense out there and kept pretty much a, a safety or a prevent lineup out there. They had a lot of guys near the line of scrimmage, but then they dropped some guys, some linebackers and defensive linemen back to try and make a play if BW did any trickery. You think about it with the Yellow Jackets having a receiver and a, a running back as their punters, they have a very they sometimes have a disadvantage. Um, the other team has a disadvantage because they can run at any time. Right, they can, but that was a little bit longer than I think John Snow wanted to try. Fourth and eight, not exactly the scenario you want to try that with. Okay, so on the sweep, you get Damon Jones, who takes the sweep out of bounds. He looks like he gets about five yards on the play, and the Muskie, fighting Muskies bring their offense back out and looking to possibly put some points back onto the board. Yeah, and if they do, they could take the lead here. Uh, it's only a six-point ball game, BW in front, 13-7, to seven, with 9.46 to go. All the momentum is pointing towards the way of the Muskies, though. They scored a touchdown. They've gotten a couple defensive stops. Almost had a second turnover on the day. They're really moving efficiently in all, all facets of the game. And Dinginger hands the ball off as he's still fighting for extra yards. And that's Wilson who fought for a few extra yards to bring up a third. It looks like five on this next play. 
It's so, a manageable third down situation for the Muskies. But again, they don't have Scanlon due to injury, so they're going to have to find another way to get yardage. So they look to the sideline for the play. And the Yellow Jackets have to be looking to try to get off the field as much as possible, as quickly as possible, so they get the ball back to the offense and try to eat up some clock. So it's a third down, third and six. There's eight minutes and 50 seconds left in this game. The Muskies come out in a shotgun set, and Dinginger looks to go to the air, and he has a receiver, and he catches the pass, and a touchdown saving block, a touchdown saving tackle there by Jake Carney on that play. Jordan Turek ran an inside route, a flag route, if you will, actually a post route, inside post from the left side of the formation, secured the ball. Uh, at about the 40-yard line, then fought his way up to the 47. Good bit of uh, pass play right there by the Muskies as Degener surveyed the field, you know, took his time, had a clean pocket, and then find, found his wide receiver uh, over the middle for the first down. Dinger comes back out with a pistol set with Wilson behind. He calls Hayes Carworth in motion but hands the ball off to Wilson as Wilson gets up to the 48 yard line making it a five to go so second and five on this next play and so far in this game the Yellow Jackets have been not so successful on stopping that run and you really have to credit those big guys up front for the fighting Muskies yeah, the Muskies offensive line is doing a, a put in a workmanlike effort today. They're going to be tired tomorrow, but if they get a victory here today, it's going to feel pretty good. And the Yellow Jackets come up with a big stop there, coming up with a gang tackle from the Yellow Jackets, which will bring up a third and, and four. It looked like he, they gave him an extra yard on that play. He was able to push it forward a couple feet, and they gave him the full yard. So third and almost, we'll call it between four and five uh, for the Muskies. Definitely been manageable the way that they've played. And th since the second half has started, they've been very big on on these third downs. So coming up, shotgun set, they hurry to the line. Call long in motion, Dinginger goes to the air and he's looking to go up, but he has some pressure and he has a wide up a field to get that first down, but he has stopped short. Looks like one yard shy. BW is very, very lucky. When Degener gave himself up, he took a pop from one of the linebackers. Uh, it looked like uh, Jacob Boyd actually, excuse me, a strong safety hit him. And now there, there's a conference at the 44 yard line. Not exactly sure what this is about, but you know, with Muskingum facing a fourth and one, expect them to go for it and expect Degener to have a huge role in how this play turns out. So a fourth and one, and they bring in the big bodies for the Yellow Jackets, and also the Degener comes out onto the field. And they call a timeout, and that's a very, very important thing for Muskingum because they only have one timeout left in this game, and that could be very key late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, especially with it being a one-score game. You, you don't want to give up those gold bricks, uh, not any earlier than you have to. And, you know, they just gave up their second, and we'll see how it works. To make it work, to make up for the lost timeout, get the first down, keep the chains moving. That's what they have to do, and that's what they're going to try to do. This is a huge play in the in what will be the end result of this game if Muskingum gets it they continue to drive if BW gets it they could conceivably run out the clock if you look at their two scoring drives uh, in the second and third quarters they lasted a combined 12 minutes and 51 seconds so with 603 left on the game clock they could really uh, finish this off and they are three for three on fourth down so far in this game. So if they make if they make this from four for four on fourth down, that'll be a very, very big fourth down there. As there's only six minutes left in this game. Long goes in motion. Dinginger hands the ball off, and it looks like they have enough of that first down. And the low line is still pushing as they get about five yards on that play, bringing it a first and ten from the 38-yard line. Yeah, Muskingum's doing a good job to play 
a relatively mistake-free second half. The penalties haven't uh, been as crushing as they were in the first half. They're keeping possession of the ball. And if you're the Jackets, you just keep getting worn down. You see them cycling in those defensive tackles, trying to get fresh bodies out there. But with Muskingum hurrying to the line, sometimes it's not possible. 53 minutes, five minutes and 53 seconds left, and Dinginger takes the read option, and he gets a lot on the play, and he's he still in, and he almost gets to the end zone as it was a bad tackle, tackling job there by the Yellow Jackets. He almost scores on the read option. A beautiful play right there by Muskingum. The guys up front blocked it. The Jackets defense bit on the fake. And then it opened a, a hole on the outside for Degener to get to the sideline, and he powered his way through several tackles and uh, darn near spun out of the last one and into the end zone while really not even knowing where he was on the field. And you can't really give that tackle up uh, when you're that corner. You got to make sure he goes out of bounds and not think that he's going out of bounds. And it is a first and goal on the one-yard line. Dinginger waits for the snap. Looks like he's going to hand it off to Wilson. And Wilson gets in for the touchdown, tying this game up 13-13. to -13. And with a potential PAT, it could be 14-13. to -13. And the momentum has really shifted to the Muskingum so far. Yeah, and really uh, not a good drive right there by the Baldwin-Wallace defense. We talked all day long about how their rush defense had to improve, and the read option is what bit them on the, or on the big play. And then they just bowled through the middle for the for the touchdown. But four for four here in the second half on fourth down conversions. That will win you some ball games. And the kick is up and it is good. And they take the lead. Right now, we have a flag on the play. It's it's going against the Jackets. Uh, they were guilty of an encroachment penalty. Muskingum will deny or will decline that. Take the point. Take a 14-13 lead here with 4.51 to play in quarter number four. This is a huge series coming up for the Baldwin-Wallace offense. They may not get another crack uh, at the ball if they can't turn this one into points. And they're going to have to look for a very, very big return here to hopefully get in some good field position because the second half hasn't been really nice for the offense for the Yellow Jackets so or, far. Or the special teams. The special teams has to be a, have good field awareness out there. You can't let the ball bounce on the kickoff. You have to swarm to the football, re, uh, re, recover it, um, and return it, and put yourself in a good position. And it is four minutes and 51 seconds left in this game. The Yellow Jackets bring out their kick return team and you'll have Trip Washington and Jordan Leverett returning. Cody Dent will come out for the kickoff and it's still enough time for the Yellow Jackets to still make something happen. Oh there's a ton of time. I mean four minutes and 51 seconds is absolutely an eternity. I'm just saying that if they can't get a first down or get points rather and they maybe take two minutes off the clock they might not get the ball back. Cody gives the signal to the officials. Kick is up and is in the air and it caught by Leverett, but he takes a knee in the end zone as it looks like he wanted to take that out, but look to the sideline and Coach Tuttle to kneel it down. So the next drive will start at the 25 yard line for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, discretion is the better part of Valor. Leverett kind of looked at it and said, you know what, I'm just going to take the knee because that's an easy 25 yards. We just had, don't have to worry about gaining. So the Yellow Jackets come back out onto the field. Four minutes and 51 seconds it's left in this game. The score is 14 to 13, and time is going to be very key for the Yellow Jackets to try to eat up the time but also get in scoring position. That last touchdown drive capped off by Warren Wilson's one-yard run and a Cody Dent's PAT try took nine plays, covered 75 yards in five minutes and eight seconds. And a read option is done well with Jake, Jake Hudson and Austin Smith. And it looks like Austin Smith is shaking up a little bit with a big hit by one of the linebackers from Muskegon, but a great job to pull the ball there from Hudson. Yeah, and it doesn't look very good for his left shoulder or his arm. He's holding it at his hip, and he hasn't moved it. So he's, uh, he's going to get some attention from the trainers. So the Yellow Jackets come out second and four from their own 31-yard line. 
Calling for the snap. Hudson waits for the snap. And it is a handoff. And he gets no gain on the play. And Muskegon's defense is coming up big. And a very, very key third and five on this next play for yeah, the Yeah, actually Jackets. a loss of a half yard on the play. And now your BW, you have to convert here. You've taken barely over a minute off this clock. You're going to give Muskingum a ton of time to do something if you can't get this conversion and then have to punt. Hudson looks to the sideline to get the play. The Yellow Jackets have a three-receiver set, one tight end, and a shotgun formation. Hudson calls for the snap. And they'll do a handoff to Stanette. As the net gets four yards on the play, and it'll be a fourth and one. And the Yellow Jack is probably going to look to go for this. Uh, down by a point, you have to. So we'll see what they uh, they hurry to the what line. They have in store. Fourth and two. And he calls for the snap, and it'll be a handoff to the net. And he looks like he may have enough of the first down. And it's three minutes left in this game, and they look like they do give him the call. They do give him the spot for that. So uh, pretty good call there from Coach Snell. Yeah, I mean, you have to do it. You're down by a point. You, you've got to come up with something. And they were able to get that first down, not by a whole lot, but by enough. And now they live to fight for another four downs. So two minutes and 40 seconds left in this game. And the Yellow Jackets are in a shotgun formation. George goes in motion to bring a two running back set in the backfield with Husson. And another play action, but he keeps it as he is brought down in a backfield, which will bring up a second and second and eleven. And you gotta really scratch your head there on that play calling right for that last play. Tim Oosley shot through the hole and made the play, uh, the final play for the yellow or for the Muskingum defense against this Yellow Jacket team. The defensive end, the big defensive end, did a good job to prevent Hudson from getting outside. Um, Maybe they saw something in tape study earlier in the week, but it didn't work on that play. With only two minutes left, you got to think Hudson has a lot of time. He gets the ball off to Stanette, and Stanette makes a move. He gets past the original down marker, bringing up a third and seven. Good job of getting out of that open field tackle by Stanette to get about five yards on the play. So you know, it's a third and manageable situation, but that clock is not your friend right now. Uh, you don't have three timeouts. You've got 61 yards separating you from pay dirt. But I think the Yellow Jackets would settle even for a long attempt from Simonis, who's made from 38 and 39 on the day, if they can get it to that point. Hudson takes the snap. He looks to go to the air. He finds a receiver, and Chad Steinwalk comes up with a big catch. And that's, that's a big, big catch there from the sophomore. No question about it. Steinwalks is playing... A ball, like I said, he's going to have five catch, probably four or five catches, 50 yards, but three of them are going to be for first downs. And then they throw a quick out to Steinwalk, and it's a minute and four seconds left in this game. The Yellow Jackets call a timeout. They have two timeouts left. After a big play, that second play there, try to get up to the line and do a quick um, out route, but didn't work in the favor of the Yellow Jackets. No, those quick screens, they, they you have to hit on them uh, you know, really, really effectively and have the blocking set up for them to succeed. Uh, the pass was there. The completion was there. There was nobody to block, and that's what blew that play up. So now it's second and, and almost 11, I would say, for the Yellow Jackets to try and work around. We'll see what they can do. Officials have been very generous with their spots today so far in this game. Yeah, but even the most generous of spots isn't going to help you if you can't move the ball uh, on a play like that. And unfortunately for the Yellow Jackets, that's a tough, as tough a play as any to get out of. So your two-minute offense has to be very, very key right now for the Yellow Jackets. Now the young quarterback, Jake Hudson, is going to have to be very big in this drive as a second and ten there's a minute and four seconds left in this game they go with an empty look as he calls for the snap he looks to go to the air he rolls out to his right he has a receiver he gets it to George and he is inbounds and they do mark him inbounds as they hurry back up to the line yeah, look not, not calling a timeout and they hurry back up to the line as they get everyone set, 
He waits for everyone to get set. 45 seconds left in this game. He goes, he looks to go up in the air. And he's down a receiver, but he keeps the ball and he is still running. Looks to get down as he gets the first down, but Stanette comes up hurt and Austin Smith comes back in the field, but Stanette has to run off the field. Yeah, that play was blown up by the injury to Stanette, and he, he kind of just rolls onto his back once he gets to the sideline. They're going to have to stand him up and get him further away from the field of play. You know, going through his progressions, Hudson was going through everything. He looked to his left, saw Stanette was down. He was the safety valve on the play, and then Hudson had to make something out of nothing and ended up getting a big gainer right there. And you need probably another 10 yards or so to get Simonis into his range. I'm sure he would attempt it from whatever range that they ask him to, but realistically, another 10 yards would do a world of good for the Jackets. 34 seconds left in this game. Yellow Jackets are down by one score, and they hand it off to Austin Smith, and it looks like he almost lost the ball, and they're gonna call a timeout. 30 seconds left in this game. You gotta think, trying to get closer and closer to that spot to possibly set up for a PAT. How's you set up for a field goal is what the Yellow Jackets may be looking for here. I absolutely think that's what they're looking for. That play call uh, was interesting, trying to bounce it out to the tackles. Um, not exactly something the Yellow Jackets have had a whole lot of success doing against this Muskingum defense, and they didn't on that play. It, more than anything, it hurts because you have to use that second timeout. If you gain a few more yards on the play, it doesn't look as bad because then you could hurry up and maybe set up for a clock play and then or, or another run uh, to get the ball more towards Simonis' liking and then burn the timeout with, you know, maybe four seconds left to try and get a game-winning field goal at the horn. So from that standpoint, maybe it wasn't the best, uh, best result that BW could have expected, but third and 10, 30 seconds left from the Muskingum 33, they still got an opportunity to do some things. Hudson calls for the snap. He looks to go to the air. He's looking up. He has time, and he almost. Was that intercepted? No, incomplete. The umpire ruled it incomplete, but that was close to an interception, and that would have been a crushing blow. He tried to sneak it through the window to Steinwalks and was unable to do so. So now it's fourth down for the Jackets, and uh, it's a little too long for a field goal. It would be a 50-yard try. BW has to get almost 10 yards to keep the drive alive and get Simonis onto the field. This is where that second down play that doesn't get you any yardage rushing the football comes back to haunt you. Yellow Jackets come out in a uh, four receiver set, shotgun formation. Hudson calls for the snap. He has time, he looks to get the ball out. He has a receiver and it is batted down and that's where the Yellow Jackets will come up short and Muskingum's come up big late in this game with that stop. Yeah, Muskingum just making plays late in the game and that ends up coming back to haunt the Yellow Jackets. Couple of clock plays here for uh, uh, Griffin Denninger and that'll be it. Coming out, the Yellow Jackets Denninger, have one time. Excuse me. One yep. time out left so they won't be able to stop the clock and they'll probably come out in victory formation for oh, Muskegon. No question. They'll put one knee into the turf, force the Yellow Jackets to burn that last time out, or maybe just let the clock run out. And they come out and they break. They'll, with the clock running out, they'll break that 10-game losing streak versus the Yellow Jackets. As they take a knee and the Yellow Jackets, Yellow Jackets take one time out leaving it 16 seconds left in this game. But you have to really give it to the coaching staff as well as the players of Muskegon to be down the entire game, but never to give up and come out victorious at the end. Yeah, down 10 nothing uh, at the half and really not a whole lot of good momentum going your way. And then come out and score 14 of the last 17 points in the game to, uh, to pretty much wrap this one up. One more snap, one more knee. And barring a fumble and a miracle happening, uh, BW is going to fall to two and four and one and four in OAC play. Indeed. And they take a knee, and it'll be the end of the game with 10 seconds left. And Muskingum gets a very, very big win today, pushing the Yellow Jackets to a two and four record.
one and four in conference play. Not exactly what the, the Yellow Jackets thought that this season would turn into after starting uh, with a big win on uh, opening night uh, against Defiance College since then. Just one and four on the campaign. This is a Muskingum team that's, you know, they're, they're a tough bunch of gritty kids. Uh, averaged about 20 points a game offensively. Didn't even hit that tonight. Had just 14 on the day. But it was 14 uh, that proved to be enough as the defense for Muskingum got a last stand on a tip ball on a fourth down conversion. And really four fourth down conversions in the second half turn out to pr uh, produce Muskingum a, a victory today. And as a coach, you got to say a team that continues to fight is a team that you got to love because you could have laid down in the second half while the Yellow Jackets were not taking advantage of the full game as they did with all the turnovers and penalties that Muskingum got. So Muskingum did a great job of staying to what they know. As you said, the running game became very big for them late, and they came up with some very, very key um, touchdowns and a few stops in the second half to get this win. Yeah, and the thing was they did it without their, their back, their workhorse. Jordan Scanlon went out early in the, first, uh, in, in the fourth quarter before they scored that touchdown. Uh, and then it proved to be um, not, I mean, it, obviously it's a big loss, but they fought their way through it. And now, you know, the Yellow Jackets are, are two and four, one and four in OAC play. We're gonna see what kind of fight they have uh, starting next week with homecoming. It's another opportunity for them to get on the field and uh, and kind of put uh, erase the bad taste that's in their mouth right now. Uh, not a good way to end uh, the day for BW in a game that they led pretty much the whole way. Now they have to find a way to regroup quickly, go into Hall of Fame homecoming weekend, and try to get a win over Otterbein, a team that you know, beat Muskingum 30 to 17 rather handily just two weeks ago. So the opportunity to uh, get back in the win column, it's gonna be tough for the Yellow Jackets, but we'll see just what they're made of uh, under the guidance of, uh, of John Snell. Indeed, indeed. And that pretty much concludes the webcast for today, as well as the final score of the game, 13 BW, 14. The Fighting Muskies as they come up to Berea and steal one and also to transition their losing streak against BW for the last 10 games to a winning streak now. I want to thank you again today for listening. Uh, my name is Martel Prayer, and great to be joined today by Matt Florzancic. And we're signing off. Thank you, and you all have a good weekend. Yep. Take care, everyone.